Well, I'm relieved. Now we only have to make one decision in life. Yeah, but did you ever think that maybe things work a little too well around here? Like what? Give me one example. I don't know, but you know what I'm talking about. Today we'll be looking at the progenitor origin from Stellaris Overlord. Although this origin does give us something of a weak start, it has the potential for the greatest economic growth of any empire type in Stellaris. And joining me to bring you this meta build today is Comrade Truck. Hello there everyone, my name is Comrade Truck and usually you can find me playing some multiplayer PvP lobbies and live streaming those. But today I'm more than happy to establish the natural neural network with Mr. Monto to break down this progenitor Hyman build. Thanks for joining me today Comrade and thank you very much for all of the information and help you've given with regards to this fantastic build. So without any further ado, let's dive in and look at the Tauran Entity. This is going to be the race we're going to use to show off the new Progenitor Hive origin and everything that can be done with it. So what is it that Progenitor Hive will do for us specifically in terms of the bonuses here? First off, whenever we employ any leaders, they will gain experience passively, so we should quite quickly get to the maximum available levels with all of our leaders leaders, which is a quite a nice bonus to have. The regular hive mind building of a spawning pool will be replaced with an offspring nest, which basically does the same thing, but grants us bonus output from our regular worker drones. There are a couple of other bonuses too that aren't really going to be that important today, and then we come to the offspring ships. Now offspring ships basically negate this negative effect that all of our ships will be suffering. That is minus 50% sublight speed, evasion, ship fire rate, and accuracy. That is a big problem. Offspring ships grant us 55% of each of those, giving a net of plus 5%, and their effects will work as long as you have an offspring ship in the same system. It doesn't necessarily need to be in the same fleet, just the same system. And we will be using that to tugboat some of our slower civilian ships in the early game. Overall, what Progenitor Hive is basically going to give us is an economic boost that will ramp up more and more during the game. And that's going to come from not just the leaders, but this special offspring nest as well, instead of a spawning pool. And on top of that, bonuses to all of our ships, as long as we do have an offspring ship in the system, or we construct a special offspring starbase building. We will definitely need to go with an ocean world to grab the aquatic trait. It's pretty much necessary for any meta build at the moment, then what we'd recommend you do is go for phototrophic and budding. Phototrophic we're going to be using to replace some of our food upkeep with energy. It, this is going to require that you are either a fungoid or a plantoid species type to get access to this ability. And by replacing this food upkeep with energy, we will be quite easily able to eliminate all of our food production from regular workers and instead only produce food from star bases and possibly buy a very small amount from the market. This will help our overall pop efficiency massively, giving us a really big economic benefit, especially in the early games. Game. We're going to be taking budding because we're going to have monthly organic pop assembly from our spawning pools anyway, or should I say the special offspring spawning pool building, and this will stack with that, and once you reach around 20 to 25 pops on a planet, budding will add a bigger bonus than rapid breeders. For negatives, I would take something like unruly, we can definitely gene mod that out later on, because we will be going with the genetic ascension, that is the only ascension available to hive mind empires. Speaking of hive mind empires, we are of course a hive mind you have to be that to become a progenitor hive that's going to give us massive pop growth bonuses of plus 25 percent and give us a nice juicy minus 25 percent to empire side being a gestalt consciousness will reduce our war exhaustion gain give us more influence and a bit of encryption and when it comes to civics you'll definitely want to go with ascetic that reduction to pop amenities usage is going to be so very useful even though the habitability bonus will not stack with Aquatic at the start of the game because we'll already be at 100% habitability on our home world and our two guaranteed habitable ocean worlds. Natural Neural Network is great for two reasons. Plus one research alternative is very useful when we're going to be choosing the research options at the start of the game. On top of that, we will be making use of unemployed drones at certain points. Making them produce research along with a few minerals is going to be quite nice too. And if you're enjoying, enjoying this video, video please, please press the like button to, to join the hive mind. mind. At the start of the game, you should do all the normal things like flipping to isolationist and before patch 3.5, stripping all of your ships. However, make sure not to completely strip your offspring corvette. You do want to keep the hyperdrive there. We're going to need it as a tugboat. On the capital, I would recommend you unemploy some of these maintenance drones and go down to zero or minus one amenities. That way, whilst they're unemployed, they will instead be producing some nice bonus output of research and some minerals. 
minerals instead of these amenities which overall will be pretty useless given the small stability buff they will actually provide. As a hive mind empire you'll also notice that your colony ship requires only food and alloys to produce. For that reason at the start of the game I'd recommend you start with a monthly trade of food just to get your food income up to about 50 and push that colony ship out as soon as possible. As a progenitor hive you actually don't start with a massively strong economy, we'll be relatively weak on energy, yes we'll have reasonable mineral income but that's about it. That means on the capital the first building or district we'd recommend you build is the generator district. That's going to boost your energy income and be very useful right at the start of the game. Following the generator district you should throw down the mining district to boost your mineral income, then fill up on research labs and after that just alternate between hive districts and research labs so you can boost your research income as much as possible. Do not worry too much about having negative amenities here. We can always offset that by finding some artifacts as soon as possible and using the artifact relay decision on our planet. Once you build your first colony ship, you'll want to make sure that you use the offspring ship as a tugboat. To do that, simply use it and right click on the colony ship so it follows the colony ship wherever it goes. This offspring ship should be used at all times to follow and basically prevent any bottlenecks in your empire. Right at the start, it should follow your science ship, then possibly your construction ship, and finally now your colony ship. If you don't have an offspring ship in the same system as your colony ships or whichever ship you want to move fast, you'll find that you get some massive penalties to their ship movement speed as you can see here from this construction ship which is in a system with no offspring ships. Around year 5 you should have your first colony well underway. The first building you'll need to put on any of these worlds is the offspring nest building. That will remove this missing offspring modifier which is currently giving a whopping minus 50% to menial drone output. You should also dedicate this to being a unification center right at the start as you will only have synapse drones on this planet so reducing their upkeep is pretty nice. And then dedicate this world to research alternating between research labs and hive districts. Don't forget to switch the designation of this planet over to a tech world once you have more researchers than Synapse drones. If you're enjoying this video and you'd like to support this channel, you can do so by following the link down in the description and purchasing something from the Humble Bundle store. Until September 1st, you can get your hands on the Paradox turn-based bundle for under 11 euros. This bundle includes Age of Wonders Planetfall Premium Edition, Battletech Mercenary Collection, along with four other items. Simply follow the link down in the description to get your hands on this great deal, support charity and support this channel. You can also adjust donation and choose how much of your purchase you want to go to this channel, the publisher's paradox and the charity specifically to customize where your money will go. It's also at about this time you should switch from a balanced production focus over to a manufacturing focus. Yes this will give you a minus 20% to menial drone output but given all of the modifiers you're going to be getting from text and of course from your edicts that that minus 20% relatively is much smaller than this whopping plus 20% complex drone output that we're going to be getting. Making this switch gives us in essence a free plus 20 research at this point as well as a plus two alloy income per month. Do be careful about your economy, you might need to reduce the amount of minerals you're buying and food that you are selling in order to maintain a healthy balance. In the first five to 15 years you will find that your economy is somewhat struggling but don't be afraid. When it comes to traditions you should of course complete prosperity to start with, that's going to give us some massive bonuses to all of our worlds economically and this becomes the first decision point. Either you can go for more of an economic build and take executive vigor or go for the crazy leader build and actually take transcendent learning. If you do take transcendent learning you will be at an economic disadvantage for the next 10 to 15 years although it is possible to overcome that in the end but it will give you massively overpowered leaders and it is possible to get up to level 10 with your leaders quite quickly. If you take executive vigor switch on capacity subsidies and the mineral edict if you have it. Your second colony should be focused on becoming an alloy producing mega world. However, right at the start your mineral income won't be high enough or strong enough to actually support this. For that reason the first building you should build after the offspring nest is definitely the synaptic node. That's going to give you the option to have more synapse drones and boost your unity income which you'll definitely need to unlock all of the different traditions you'll be wanting. And at this point we actually recommend that you demolish the industrial district on your capital. By demolishing this district you will free up some minerals and workers that can now work at the sixth science lab. However, you can keep the industrial district if your space income is enough to have a somewhat stable economy at 50 minerals, like in this case, and demolish it later. 
Do not worry about the fact that you are going to have very low alloy income for a few months. It could be a problem in the long run, but your alloy world will be operational very soon and therefore it won't be a problem for much longer. You should also make sure to build some star bases and turn them into economic powerhouses. For that, put the hydroponics bay building down and the solar panel network, which is going to grant you a massive amount of food and energy credits from every star base. In total, by around year 20 to 25, you'll want to have seven star bases, each with solar panel networks and the hydroponics bay building. Seven hydroponics bays should fully support your food income in the first 25 to 30 years. But what do you think about the progenitor hive origin? What has your experience been using? it, let me know down in the comments below. After taking prosperity, you should then open up synchronicity and take the instinctive synchronization tradition. That's going to give all of the synapse drones on your empire plus two amenity production. This extra amenity production should mean that you don't need to employ a single maintenance drone on any world in your empire, and that is a massive economic boost for a hive mind. On your second colony, after the synaptic node, make sure to put down a whole bunch of industrial districts and don't forget to throw down one extra hive district so you can put up an alloy foundry ready to be upgraded once you have the proper technology and you get some volatile moats. Coming back to our capital, you should continue to build additional mining districts, you're going to need them, throw down the mineral purification plant for additional miner production and efficiency, along with the energy grid, and of course, one extra synaptic node on the capital just so we can make sure to balance our amenities. Once you get to five tech labs on your first colony, stop building additional research labs. Instead, focus on rare resource production. Making sure to use the artifact relay decision on the tech world as well should mean that you're able to quite comfortably support around 17 pops working on this planet. Yes, you will have some negative amenities, but your stability should be absolutely fine. It is around this time at year 19 or 20 that you need to start resettling pops from your capital and your first colony to this alloy colony. That way you'll have enough pops working the job to start boosting your alloy production. It's year 19 and we are only making 44 alloys per month at the moment, which might seem like a problem, but that number is only going to go up. Here at year 23, we're up to 94 alloys. We've put down an extra synaptic node here to balance amenities. We've upgraded the alloy megaforge and we continue to push pops onto this world to produce more and more alloys at a more efficient rate. Around Around year 27 or 28, you'll probably want to start building all of your ships, make sure to spend all of your alloys, and build as many destroyers or cruisers if you've unlocked them as you can. Once you've completed the Supremacy Tree, which will grant loads of extra bonuses to your fleet, don't forget to change your doctrine to Hit and Run. The Hit and Run doctrine is basically going to mean that your destroyers and cruisers are almost impossible for enemy ships to kill, due to the massive disengage chance that you'll be having. Throw some admirals onto your destroyers, make sure to turn on your wartime edicts, and then hopefully you'll have somewhere in the region of 15 to 18k worth of fleet power. But this isn't where the build ends. Notice that even with all of these ships, we actually aren't running that much of an energy credit deficit. We have continued on our capital to build more generator districts and more mining districts. We've upgraded the special buildings here to grant even more production, and therefore our capital is a complete economic powerhouse. This means we're able to support the creation of even more alloy jobs and even more ships. And if we wait a little bit before going to war, if we wait and don't go here at 2230, but we instead wait until 2235, you should be able to put out something in the region of 30k worth of spaceships. And that is a force that almost no empire can stand against. As you can see, the main strength of this build is the fact that you can ramp up economically more and more and more as time goes on. If you are left alone to continue building up, you will surpass the economies of any other nation in the game. If you found this build video interesting, but you'd like even more detail on how to get the best out of a progenitor hive origin, Comrade Truck has you covered. By clicking the video on screen, you can watch every click needed to go from year zero to year 30 with this build. 